Welcome to Rock Talk Lapidary, your podcast for everything rocks. Coming to you every Thursday, 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Be sure to like, subscribe, and tap that bell. Let's get rockin'. Welcome to Rock Talk Lab there, your place for everything rocks. Uh, we do have a new format to starting today, and I'm very excited about that. Uh, my name is Chirsten Safford. I am the host of this show. Uh, today's topic, thank you, uh, Bill. Thank you, Bill, for posting that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I forgot where I was going, but basically the show has changed a lot. Um, my co-hosts um, are now doing their own show called The Love of Lapidary. And I'm lucky enough tonight to have one of my former co-hosts on as a guest, uh, Dave Layton. Come welcome on. Come tell us about your your new enterprise. Oh, uh, you're talking about the new show? Yeah. It it, it is called The Love of Lapidary. And, uh, you know, that wasn't that wasn't the name that I wanted to choose. But, you know, they just didn't like some of the things that I came up with. No, it's it's a great name. I think everybody's going to have a good time. And last night, you know, we, we had a pretty good show last night. We had a lot of fun. Um, it's kind of the same thing. We just want to talk about rocks. And that's all we care about. And so we tried out the new software last night and got it going. And and I even got, I think I've met new people last night that I hadn't met before. So, you know, that oh, was really awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. That's fun. So uh, is the format kind of the same or have you guys mixed it up a bit, changed it up? You know, it's it's a little bit different. Um, there's really no formality to it. And we just all come on at one time. We all say goodbye at one time. It's all, you know, one of these numbers like this. And and, yeah. and I, I, I get to be the goofball as always, you know. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm still the sense of humor and the eye candy. So that's all I care oh, about. Oh, eye candy. Okay. We're going we're gonna we're gonna just let that one slide. <laughs> so I have been making a ton of friends over on TikTok and I wanna share a video that was sent to me and this is West Cider and this is how okay, so he goes out rock hounding on the beach. Now on this beach, he finds these huge logs of petrified wood. It is absolutely incredible. And he, instead of carrying them on his back, has come up with this new idea. I'm going to show it really quick. It's cute. Mm -hmm. October, how cute is that? I, I got to get one of those for Roxy. Yes, you do. Yeah. That would help. That would help a lot. If she didn't lick all of the rocks every five feet. <laughs> Does she stop and lick the rocks? <laughs> well, she, you know, I, I pulled one out of the tinfoil yesterday where I, where I baked it in cactus juice and it was a rock she'd seen before and she had to take time to lick that, that slab. <laughs> she just got down on there. Oh, that is too funny. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so we do upload to uh, Spotify every Friday morning. Um, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to keep the show going. I'm going to try and do my best to stay with you guys as long as I possibly can. I have a new, completely new setup for polishing rocks. I wish I could show it to you, but I can't Ooh. move my camera. Um, and it's just right here. I just turned to 90 degrees and it's right here. Um, it's like a weird tote that's got a lot of rocks in it to hold it in place. And then it's got plexiglass side. And uh, this cool thing that I'm going to use to rest my hands on, it's a pool noodle. So uh, I will be going live on TikTok every day for probably an hour at least, just doing carving, uh, answering questions about how to use the Dremel. Um, I know last night I did watch the show from start to finish. I think I missed maybe the first couple of shows or a couple of minutes, but, you know, that's okay. Um, but you guys talked about Dremels a lot and tile saws. Um, had a lot of really good points. Absolutely. So I don't know. What what do you feel about what was said last night about tile saws? You know, I, I, I've got, I, I am one of those people who was really torn about tile saws. Um, mm -hmm. Listen, they're, they're a cheap way to go, um, but they can... 
you just got to be careful with them. And, <laughs> and, and I made a statement on there. I, you know, I was just being, you know, I just being me, just being blunt. I said, but if you're stupid, they're probably not for you. And right. I, I was going to save that clip. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, but the meaning of that is, listen, you, you really have to pay attention and understand what they were meant for versus what you're going to use it for. Right. And, you know, practice some safety. The rocks come off of those once in a while and and fly off somewhere and people have gotten hit. I've seen uh, arbors break and people get uh, hurt when the blade comes loose because the cheaper yep. tire, tile saws, they just were not meant to slab rock with. They were meant to cut very thin slabs. You can get tile saws that, that are made to do the heavier stuff. That's great. But it's just, it, you know, it, it's again, it's the affordability versus you know, um, everything else. So just, just be careful with them. Absolutely. Um, I like Courtney get my, um, blades from Lowe's, but recently have started buying lapidary blades for it. And the cut is much cleaner. Mm -hmm. Um, as long as you just let the diamond do the work and you're not pushing and forcing your way through, I think everything will be fine. You know, you're going to cut a limited amount of agates and Jasper with that blade. Um, it's going to run out right. of diamond, right. you know, they don't last very long, but if you get a lapidary blade, those things will last so much longer. Um, I know that somebody said something about uh, the spin rate. That's so true. You got to right. get a blade that works with your motor. So, um, you know, I, I think just going back to, the basics for me, which is everybody getting in no matter where they are financially um, and and showing them different tricks and tips to get started. That's that's always been my passion. Always. <laughs> right. Well, and you yeah. know, and I, I, I tend to be a little spoiled sometimes. I mean, um, I started with a very, very old three hundred and fifty dollar um, Lortone 10 inch saw. Um, mm -hmm. as well as, uh, you know, now the old cab mate, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world as far as for a trim saw. It doesn't do real well at slabbing, but as a trim saw, I would, I, there, I would trade it for nothing. Um, and I'll keep that. That's 35 <laughs> years old. But, yeah. you know, um, I started with that old lore tone um, and I graduated from there. I, I sold that and I added to it and I bought my 10 inch HP saw. So. I didn't have to go and try and find something, you know, like a uh, uh, Harbor Freight model. And yeah. So, yeah. Oh goodness. <laughs> you know that that allows me to be a little bit more picky, is what it is. Yeah. Um, and I'm also an extremely safety-minded person, and I have had my limbs hurt enough in life that they've become really important to me to keep them in the shape that they are now. All floppy. <laughs> All <Ooh>. floppy. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, one thing no, I will that's, say, that's a good thing. I, I, mm. I did recommend to people last night when we were talking about that, even though I'm not a huge fan of MK Blades. I mean, they've just, they've changed over the years. They're not what they used to be. But if you go to their website and look at information on the different types of blades and what the difference between uh, a blade for a, a trim saw, a slab saw, and a, uh, uh, the one from Harbor Freight is, you'll see why they're saying that. And they will, they will tell you that you don't have to buy one of their blades to look at that information. Just go look at it so you have an understanding of why they make a blade for a higher speed uh, for those tire saw, tile saws and what the differences are. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a really nice thing to have, um, given to you. Um, most like if you go on Amazon and you look at blades for lapidary that you're not going to get that information. So, right. you know, exactly. while they're cheap and only $10, you got to remember, you get what you pay for. So. Right. And that's, and that's really true. Of, it really is. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's, it's not about the quality of the diamond. Diamond is made in a factory and it's very, very cheap to make. It's the quality of the the uh, workmanship of the blade itself. Yeah, it is. Uh, so let's let's go on. Dave might not be able to be with us for very long, and I'd I'd kind of like to get started into our topic tonight. We will be doing a live giveaway at the very end of the show. 
Um, so stick around for that and make sure you're dropping comments and that's how you win. Um, so what we want to, what I want to talk about tonight is Timu. I don't know if anyone here has been purchasing from Timu, T-E-M-U. Um, but I, I kind of want to share a few photos so that you guys can get a, a glimmer and a glimpse into what you're going to see over there. Now, I've been with Timu. I've been buying from them for like about six months. And it is very touch and go as far as like what you're going to find. Is it accurately described? Is the weight correct? Is the size correct? Um, one of the biggest things is learning the difference between grams and ounces and pounds and kilograms and There's just how much volume that is. Yeah. Would you believe that? I know. <laughs> So, uh, you know, if you're going to spend $17 for 100 grams of fluorite in the rough, that breaks down to, you know, $17 billion per pound. And you really don't want to be spending that much when you can go to like Zippy Rocks and get a pound for $9 or $12 or whatever it is going for at the time. But I have gotten some pretty good quality items. But let's start with this one. Dave, What's your immediate reaction to this? Um, all of the people that I have to try and keep kicked out of our groups every single day. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You know, uh, Dave is the admin for uh, several of the rock identification groups that we have together as a friend group. And oh my gosh, you know, sometimes we get some crazy stuff put in there. So well, it, it's it's because of all of the uh, the foreign sellers who don't like to obey the rules, and they just come in and they just start posting it everywhere. And so and, the, and this mm -hmm. is some of the product, you know, that that they sell. So yeah, yeah, no, and you're gonna see this. So basically, what this is, it looks like smelt glass. They call it natural blue amethyst quartz. Right, right. So not having um, the appropriate nomenclature added to those names should be a really big uh, red flag. Absolutely. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Let's look at this next one. Malachite peacock eye crystal. Um, uh, that is Kambaba Jasper. Yes, sir. <laughs> I mean... If you're educated and you've done your research, then you know, hey, that's Kambaba Jasper. That's pretty cool. Maybe I want that for my collection for $6. Maybe I get it. It has no malachite in it, I don't think. No, no, it is no. It is ancient seaweed. Ancient seaweed. Yeah. I love that. It is a, <laughs> it's actually, it's actually a South African stromatolite. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So this one, I thought, wow, that is spectacular. Look how uniform and perfect it is, right? How long it took to glue those in there? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> this, this is an example, a prime example of lab-grown quartz, mm -hmm. okay, and amethyst. And they wanted $150, $160 for it. And the, the going price here is $53. Um, if you're really into lab grown minerals, you can find some very nice ones. But um, again, this is not found in nature. This was grown in a pot. You can tell by the obvious um, a, a symmetry and that each crystal looks perfect. Um, it, it, we'll see some more here. Here's another funny one, Dave. Is that windshield glass? <laughs> I think so. I think it might <laughs> That's be. exactly what that looks like. It's cyan stone. Beautiful stone. No, it's glass, guys. Don't be bought over by the pretty photos that they take. Look for things like um, habit, you know, the shape, the growth of the stone itself. But yeah. Of glass, pretty glass, but it's glass. Um, what are you guys all thinking in the comments? Sorry, I'm I'm running it all by myself on the background here, so I don't. Okay, 
<laughs> Pumbaba is rhyolite. Interesting. Windshield glass. Yeah. Okay. So this one um, is natural smoky quartz necklace. Now you're going to see the word natural on everything that you look at, and it is not going to be natural. You just have to be able to discern. These are irradiated to make them blacker. They're not natural. So that is as something to consider. And the price. If you're paying $2 right. for a crystal that's been drilled, um, $2, it's it's like wholesale prices and even less than that. I, and, and, and at $2.69, when you get it, it might not even be a quartz at all. It's more likely it very well could be just an epoxy. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes, absolutely. Let me go back to photos. Here's another one. So get through all these weird ones, and then I'll show you some of my picks, some of the great finds that you can find. And I actually have a whole bunch of them here with me. So this says it's a green fluorite quartz crystal tower. But to me, it looks unreal. It looks like a glass that's been dipped in a light green dye. Um, so, I mean, you're kind of on your own with discernment. You need to be able to, like, how, you know what I'm saying? You need to so be this able is frosty. to. If, if you look through it, this is frosty. I was looking. I have that 12-pound chunk that I got here a while back from a young man uh, that shipped it to me from California of the green fluorite. Yeah. And I wanted to show that. I it, It's down here somewhere in all of this stuff. But. It this this has it yeah see what this you is have, green fluorite there you go exactly like that right there and if you look at the differences not only is the color a little bit too light but looking through it you have this kind of a frosted glass uh, look to it and each one looks too perfect there's that's, yeah that's a big giveaway right. if it looks too perfect it is too perfect here we go with a this is another lab grown quartz. You can see the symmetry. You can see the perfect terminations. Um, this is probably one of the biggest lab-grown items is the green quartz. Uh, what's it called? Chlorite, guys? Yeah, uh, most likely, yes. I think so. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. It's hard for me to keep up with the comments. Chlorite will give you a darker green than what chromium will. Okay, okay. Thank you. And then another lab grown. Only 32 though, guys, what a deal. So this was just a picture of me scrolling through and there's two lab grown quartz. There's some dyed agates here. Um, you know, if it's a bright color like that, generally not found in nature. Right. Very few stones are gonna have these bright colors. You need to probably, I mean, un unless you are all about dyed rocks, um, probably stay clear. Well, and look at those citrines. Um, <laughs> They're they so are, yellow. Yeah, they are. Uh, they are so bright. They are too uniform. Mm -hmm. Eight dollars and ninety nine cents for the uh, for the terminated crystals. If that was a true natural citrine, I don't care if it was from the the jungles of China. That would be anywhere from several hundred to several thousand dollars for yes, a natural citrine, which is actually pretty rare. Yeah, I mean, so this offers people, and uh, affords them an opportunity to have something that they couldn't maybe necessarily get, but at the same time, it's not natural. Even though it says right. it's natural, it is not natural. Um, going down, these are fun, thank you. Okay, so this one is cat's eye. Now, cat's eye is just a lab created glass. So it says here it's a jasper, and that is absolutely not true. Well, I just wanted to bring to uh, to notice. A spot said there was some of that green stuff in the pan he cleared from the back of his fridge. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, big game man says guess anything online can be sketchy, and that is absolutely true. Um, yeah. it doesn't matter where you're buying from Amazon or Timu or wish or from people directly. Um, you know, in the United States, they are supposed to declare 
the treatments that each stone has had. So, you know, if you epoxy a stone, you need to declare that in the sale, bill of sale. You know, there's there's all these laws, but outside countries, it does not matter. So here's another fake quartz. And it the more you see it, the more you see, okay, that's the symmetry I need to watch out for. That's what about this? I went oh, off wow. on this in the in a group last week or the week before. That, that, <laughs> that, just, <yeah. laughs> that just plain old glass uh, that, that someone has colored with a pigment. <laughs> it is. That is all it is. And it's smelting stone, which it's smelted. And that should trigger in your mind, okay, it's glass. It Maybe it was silica I, sand beforehand, and now it's this pretty glass. And if you're into pretty glass, that's great. But no, it's not a stone. Before they were recycled, those were somebody's canning <laughs> jars. Oh, no. Not the canning jars. I've been canning a lot lately. I need. Oh, uh, this is awesome. So any treatment like this, this is done in a high heat with metal. Um, so it says it's a natural purple or a spaler. Spaler. Spalerite. So, <laughs> thank you. Huh. Uh, it is not natural. That is a man, like before it was coated with the titanium or whatever they coat it with, that was natural, but now it's not. Now it's man-made. Well, and there's a really big word right there. It says electroplated. Mm, mm -hmm. That is a good word to learn. Yeah. Especially if you work Dremel and you use Dremel bits or anything like that. You know, right. you got electroplated where they just it elect electrically sits on the brass or you have the, it starts with an S. <laughs> the other kind where it's in the actual stone or the ceramic or whatever media they use. Anyways, so what is it, Dave? Help uh, me. My brain is dead right now. Mine is broken too. Oh, great. <laughs> I'll think of it later. So luminous fluorite crystal headlight. And I'm going to say that that is probably a. It's two cue balls. It is cue balls. That's funny. That's um, exactly what they look like, a ceramic cue balls. Yeah. So I, I think they're just ground up and then epoxied, and then that's how they shape it afterwards. Wow. I, I don't think that that is a natural fluorite. I don't remember white being in any of the fluorites that I own. Well, I, I have totally never wrong. seen a fluorite that would be uh, that opaque. Yes. And with no cleavage, no, right. no, nothing, nothing showing. So they're too perfect. Uh, died. Dead. Totally. Just, that, I'm, I'm sorry. That's just ugly. I mean, that is so gaudy. <laughs> they, they put so much dye in that, that it just made it gaudy and ugly to me. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. You know, when they dye stones, it doesn't always permeate into the stone very deep. And if there's cracks or fractures, you can tell a stone is dyed by looking in those cracks or fractures and hitting it with a little rubbing alcohol. Mm -hmm. Sometimes right. that will bring that dye right out. Um, I had a, one of the first things I bought off of Wish when it came out was an obsidian uh, ball, sphere. And my dogs got a hold of it. And all it was was a glass sphere with black gel coating over it. So when and if you do buy anything from Timu, if it's obsidian, uh, you want to make sure that you take that and look at it through a lens with lights, um, especially if you're reselling and you're buying these for like right. 58 cents and marking them up. You, you don't want to be getting caught selling stuff that you shouldn't. So here is an example of, I don't know with, if Eric has given them the right to use Uperlite. Um, he can go after, he owns the trademark. He can go after anyone that right. uses that word. No uh, one has, that I know of, has been given rights <laughs> or has bought rights to the name Uperlite. Yep, yep. So China does buy tonnage tonnage of our rocks. Um, Ty Lamp, who was on two seasons ago, talked about that with the gem bone. Straight to China. Straight to China. So maybe they are getting some of the USA materials. 
and then doing this with it. But it's hard to hard to say and hard to know. Um, I don't think you're getting a really good bill of sale that way. Um, but well, if you know the, Uperlites, you would know that this would be worth a lot more than thirteen forty nine. Well, and this is what is called a stock photo. And this is a photo that has mm -hmm. been taken. I've seen it before. You can go and buy the rights to the photo and use it for whatever you want. And thousands of people use this identical photo mm -hmm. to advertise their products. So I really want to go through these next few pretty quickly because they're pretty basic and I think common knowledge. But for those of you who don't understand, just natural stone, purple turquoise doesn't exist. This is the composite that has been made and shaped in a compression machine or a CNC machine. Mm -hmm. So fake, double fake. Another one of those uh, ghost crystal clusters, the green crystal, it's definitely man-made. Oh, look at that composite. That's composite. Fun. Yep. This is about 35 years old. So yeah, yep. same thing. So pink turquoise. I don't know of any pink turquoise. Uh, this necklace stuck out to me because it says natural scenery, turquoise, and sand heart. You know, not made with turquoise. You, you just have to be really careful when buying. So this ornamental glass, um, it says it's an ornamental stone, but this is just more of that smelt glass that we've seen in tower form. And you can buy rough on Timu. I just... Uh, advise you to be very careful, read the weight, read exactly what you can and just know one out of 10 times or two out of 10 times or nine out of 10 times you might get, you know, bamboozled. Here's one, it's a favorite. That is turquoise healing stone. <laughs> if you guys know, you know. So, um, <laughs> that looks like paint crackled porcelain. It it looks horrible. I mean, um, if you're into that and into that look, that's great, you know. Um, but I like to buy natural stones, which I've done really well. So one thing though that you need to keep in mind when you are buying from Timu or out of the country is when you get pieces delivered to you, they are gonna be oiled a lot of times. And the oiling is going to mask any fractures or any issues that right. are with the stones. So the first thing you want to do when you get your stones, if you're buying from there, is wash them in Dawn soap. Yep. So, Let them soak long enough to get into those fractures and cracks. These were great. They were not sent oiled. They were sent in a great big package. I think I bought two pounds. Um, but these, you know, they're perfect for carving. They're the, the perfect size. I think it was seven bucks. You know? Oh, nice. Sometimes you can find really good deals. Um, sometimes you can find stones that you don't naturally have in your area. Um, I, I was able to get this little green calcite. Um, it comes with the tip covered so it doesn't break. Uh, this one was not oiled, which surprised me, considering it came from probably the India, Pakistan area because of the stone. Um, I mean, I, I do I like the colors on that one. This one, this buy, uh, I, I got it for like $2. It's, it's an interesting piece. You see stuff like this all the time on Facebook. Um, if you ever accept friend requests from strangers who sell rocks, oftentimes you're going to see a lot of stuff like this in your inbox. Um, you can see the kerf, those lines from the, from the blade. They did not obviously spend a lot of time making this or polishing it, but it is a beautiful specimen of moss agate that I didn't have. So it, I'm okay with it. You know. Well, and, and I think a lot of that stuff is made for the undiscerning. Uh, palette. In other words, you know, they're selling that to people. They don't know what it really should look like. We're, we we right. do this as art, so we know, you know, the what uh, what dome it should have and how much polish and whether or not these are just simply made for a person who wants to get out something, use it as a decoration, and it's it's so so. Yeah, yeah, that's truth. Uh, 
a sucker's born every day or whatever, however that saying goes that Scott said, but it, it's true. Like you have to, if you are going to put yourself in a situation where you're going to spend a couple hundred dollars, make sure that that money is getting spent on good stuff. You know, um, right. I can't even tell you how much I've spent. Um, I got these, these were a great deal, $1.98. I know I gave one to almost everybody in the crew. So um, it's just, you know, super easy to use. I highly recommend these products. You know, Dremel bits. I have been using these for like two months straight. They're still going strong. So for $3.49, you're getting this entire package right here that you see. Um, this, this was really cool. This is a magnifier but it is it came with a nice leather pouch for ten dollars it's got three different light settings it's made of steel it's very heavy and it's for me i can put a slab in there of say dinosaur gem bone and really get a close you know 60 time magnification of um the cells it's, it's great what if you got to scrape something out their kitchen their kitchen items, I really like. I go for them because they can be used in the shop, you know. You got to scrape out that side of the uh, Covington saw, you know. It's it's good for that. No, that's or made for my spaghetti saw. pan. Ah, no, that's made yeah. to get the last <laughs> little bit out of there, out of the pan and scrape into the spaghetti. This was a good deal, $2. Um I mean, you can get them at Harbor Freight, too, for about the same price. Oh, wow. So if you're willing to wait two weeks or, or whatever, they're never late. I've never had an issue with not receiving items. Um, these now, are really if, good. You can put them in your Dremel and get into little tiny spaces and use diamond uh, paste on them. Great. Highly recommend. If you were to buy a single item on some of these, uh, would the shipping make it? Uh, Shipping's free. Cheaper? I've never paid shipping. Really? I've never once paid shipping with them. No. This little walnut vise I use for drilling holes and now. So I put the stone in there and then I just drill through with these really good um, bits. I can show you in just a second. It, here's some tape for your fingers for a dollar. You know, it doesn't have to be the rocks. If you steer away from the rocks and look at the art supplies that you can find, really, really good deals. These 3D displays that are, you know, $10 on Amazon, they're only a dollar here. You know, so, if you really want to find out what good deals are, guys, ask a poor lapidaris is looking for a deal. Yeah, me. <laughs> Just ask me. I'll tell you where to find everything. So these are my new favorite. Um, I use these for drilling out holes in rocks. Uh, they're perfect. They, they really do work really great. But um, I also have these and... You know, for $3 or $2, if you're willing to wait a week, it's great. You can get your business supplies if you guys have business. Um, I have never been swindled. And I think it's just because I'm very careful about what I buy. But sometimes you have to spend $20 to get $20 worth of good stuff. Because well, one that, out of five is going to be a yeah. good item. You never just know. because it's from China doesn't mean it's all bad stuff. I mean, there are sellers there that knowingly sell stuff that doesn't have any value to it. But I buy a lot of really good quality stuff out of China. I do, too. Um, you know, there's there's a big thing going around right now that you got to be careful about where you buy your rocks from, because a lot of these items that are coming from overseas are made with child labor. You know, do you want to support that? Nobody wants to support that. But how can you not? Because everybody's selling it. Well, I don't know. It built character in me. I mean, I've been working since I was a little bitty kid. And, you know, I picked <laughs> apples, pears, everything. And the worst it did to me, I mean, I ache a little bit. and My hair fell out by the time I was 17. But otherwise, I came out okay. <laughs> you, you came out a little twisted. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. We like that here. Hey, at, at least I wear my skirts below my knees. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I would love to answer any questions. If anyone has questions about what's going on, um, what really good deals on Timu are. Let me check my notes, make sure I covered everything I wanted to cover. Go ahead and talk, Dave. You're good at that. 
<laughs> well, you know, it, it really does. It, it brings up so everyone really and I I was one of them too. everybody put down stuff that came out of China. But, you know, a lot of uh, American companies have moved into China uh, and, and manufacture stuff there. And I was talking to, um, the CEOs of Highland Park Lapidary here a while back. I was talking to John and Sherman. Uh, oh, yeah. matter of fact, we had them on our we show and they were talking about it. <laughs> and he said, listen, he said, it's not what people think. He said, everybody thinks that you come over here and you just automatically get cheap labor. And he said, that's not what they moved over there for. They moved over there for access to materials that they could not get here. But he said in those areas of China where they're allowed to build, he said labor costs them as much or more as higher paid labor does right here in the United States. And they're taking people that don't have much of a career and they are specifically training them and giving them skills that they did not have before so that they can make a living. So not every not everybody over there, including the Chinese companies uh, now. Do some of them have a little bit less knowledge of technology? Some of them do. Um, he told me a story about one of the shaping machines because the first time I ever talked to Sherman was about why should I buy your shaping machine for $3,000 when I can get a Chinese one for $900? And he said, let me tell you why. He said, I own 10 of those $900 shaping machines. He said, they do the job, he said, but I have to put this giant pan under every single one of them. He said, because what they don't understand here is how to use a washer appropriately. And he said, oil goes in, oil comes out. So we scrape the oil, we put it back in and oil comes back out. And so, you know, the machines held up, the quality of the machine was okay, but that was the deficit in that one. So, you know, not everyone over there is uh, is out to gouge, but there are a lot of them, yes, who are, and we have to find out what's what. Well, I think they come in quick and fast to get their money and then they're gone. Right. And a lot of them work together in like family groups. And so it's yes. very hard to, to pinpoint where it's coming from. Um, but they, the thing with Timu is if you rate anything you purchase under a three, which I have, I have so many like scathing responses to things I've ordered, um, you know, check, go and look at those, go and read them, make sure that it is what, what you think it's going to be. But, you know, they get in, they get out and they change your names. Yeah, my, my biggest problem was when we were wearing masks for COVID and I was required to wear them at work and I saw a video that actually the masks were being made in, uh, I believe that was uh, southern oh. China. And on yeah, the they were sitting on the floor, yes. pulling this material across the floor and you could see rats in the background, all kinds of stuff. And, I thought, and this well, is that's how things are made there. I don't want from, that. Yeah. <laughs> you know. You know, but it's it's not about thinking badly about those people. They were trying to make a living. Uh, yeah. No, I don't want to use those masks. I want to be careful about what I get. But um, I remember being so poor that I ate left over uh, dinner for breakfast. You know, that was half of my life growing up. So, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. So here's another thing you need to be aware. If you are going to go to Timu and use them and buy from them, do not sign up for notifications. Don't sign up for anything with your email. It's going to try to push you into doing those things. If you do, you're going to get like 10 spam messages a day from your email and your phone. So um, I just ignore it. I just ignore and hit delete. I'm just like, okay, next. Okay, what's going on? Sometimes they catch me. They're like, oh, you get 90% one item. I'm like, okay, let's go spend some money. But, you know, for the most part, it's just all tools. And supplies, you know, housewares, stuff like that. Um, well, and, and I'm glad you had this segment tonight because I, I've looked at them. Um, I did sign up and I got all of the, the emails and all of the, you know, yeah, you got to be careful there. But I was afraid to buy from them because I didn't know if my credit card number was safe. Just didn't know anything about them yet. Crazy. Um, I know you're not paying attention, so... Um... I would love it, Dave, if you would pick a number between 1 and 25. Nine. All right. Number nine. Hey, guys. It looks like Jaws Jr. wins tonight's giveaway. I will be sending out one piece of 
rainbow obsidian with one piece of fluorite and maybe a couple other gifties, but go ahead, uh, Jaws Jr. and get on to rocktalklapidary at gmail.com. Send me your mailing address, all that good stuff, and I will get that out to you. Thank you guys so much for playing along. Thank you, you know, all I, for being here tonight. I know how many rocks Jaws has. I should I should pick a different number. Too late. Too late. Unless you're going to do a giveaway. <laughs> Uh oh, you froze. For up. me lately. Oh, there I froze up. There Am you I go. still frozen? Nope. Oh, still your frozen. head's spinning in circles, though. <laughs> Spitting out pea soup? I wouldn't doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> just ask. Just ask William. Yeah. Hey, now. You're a rock star. <laughs> Get your game on. Go. Hey. <laughs> I I'm not going to join you in chorus. Everybody would leave the show. Yeah, that, you know, I don't think so. I think that everybody would appreciate it. <laughs> um, so as far as me going out and doing anything, I'm mostly going to be focusing on my drama work. I am going to go try and climb a mountain this week called Sunrise Peak. It is in the Wasatch Range. It's a very easy hike, uh, but it is like two miles in and two miles out, so... We'll see how that goes. Um, I would love to know what you guys in the comment section are going to be doing this week as far as lapidary goes, or if you have any questions about tumbling. Dave's great for tumbling, so is Jaws Jr. Um, Dremel work, I'm great for answering questions about that or anything like that. I actually have a brand new tumbler on the market over here running now. So I'm running that for six weeks straight without opening them just to okay. test the durability of the tumbler. And so Highland wow. Park Lapidary finally got their tumblers out and I got two of them. And it, it is just, it, it's so far, it's phenomenal. I, I, zero heat, whatever the temperature of the room is, that motor and that tumbler uh, case are that temperature. It's a direct drive, no belts, no pulleys, direct drive DC motor. And so far, I'm liking it. That's way cool. I, I have my thumbler going. I think it's going to be the last batch that I do for the winter because it's outside in the garage. And I don't yeah. want, you know, the rocks to freeze if it and if it gets that you cold You don't have out heat there, out so. there at all, do you? I don't. I, I mean, I can all. turn a heater on, but that's costly. You know, yeah. I'm already getting in trouble because it costs money to run a tumbler. <laughs> so I can wait till spring. I'll pick out the best of the best and do it again in the spring. I got to change that over tomorrow. I always forget. I, I always forget it's out there. <laughs> eight tumblers. I think I have eight tumblers, nine tumblers with my vibes. Um, I can't say that running one or two tumblers that I've ever noticed a difference on my electric bill. Really? Yeah. yeah. No, me either. I've never. It doesn't, it doesn't do much. Now the cost know. of my grit and my polish, yeah, it's a little different. It is. Bill wants to know what you got in your tumblers, Dave. Um, let's see on, in one barrel, I have Willamette River, um, Cal Sydney's and agates that was actually donated okay. to our charity. And so I'm going to tumble those and, and dole them out to the kids. On, on the other side, I have uh, Lincoln City uh, Beach Jaspers. So just Jasper that we picked up on the beach over there. Um, and uh, so I put, I just kind of loaded them separately. Um, it was fast. It was easy. I'm not even changing grit for six weeks. I oh, put you know, in there it's going to get so on. smooth. They're going to be so smooth by the time you're done. Right. You might... Yeah, you could probably do just a week on level two and be just fine after that. Oh, you know, more likely. Hop right the, out. The, the real thing was just to test this out um, because actually we are getting ready. I just announced to the to the group, we're getting ready now to put out another rock tumbler to another kid with autism. Oh, congratulations. And I'm trying to decide, do I go with my normal lower tone tumbler or do I do this one? Is it tested well enough yet to send one to a kid? Oh, yeah, I really, yeah. really hope so, because those are really, really nice. I watched your TikTok um, and your Facebook reel about it, and they look like really great machines. Hi, Matt Sams is with us. Hey, He's in the Matt. comments. Thank you for joining. You're so nice. Yeah, 
I, I think the next couple of weeks for me is going to be pretty tough. So, but I'm really excited. You guys got something really good going on and I can see it going really far. So well, I, well, I'm, let me tell I'm really you, I miss you. That. I, I miss you guys you. too. I was there, but I just didn't feel comfortable to comment, but I will next time. I will yeah. for sure next time. I, I missed you enough to be here tonight. Thank you. And I'm so glad that just makes my heart full. And, uh, you know, I'm going to just do what I can to keep going for, for as long as I possibly can. Um, well, you know, but you I, got my support. So. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. Um, I'm just uh, really, really grateful to you guys for everything that you taught me and all the, you know, wonderful things and times that we had. It's, it's weird to me to think that I'm taking this rock talk lapidary, which was our show combined and doing it solo. It's just the way it worked out, you know, as far as like what I have going on and what you guys have going on. And it's, it's really good to see you guys growing on your own. Well, Chirsten, you came full circle as a thing. You, you started out as solo and then, and then you added me in there. And then we, I think, uh, Courtney was the next one and, and yep. we kind of did that. And then things change. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't a change for the worst or anything. It was just change. No. And yeah. now you've come back to that full circle, but you gained experience through that circling. And so here you go. Here I go. Here I go. Oh, now sorry. Now you know more about what you want to do, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's kind of helping me get prioritized on what is mostly important to me. And that's getting back to my roots of teaching people how to get into lapidary cheaply so they can see if it's something right. that's for them, you know? So, and I appreciate all the work you guys do in, in our Facebook groups and, and how you keep everything running smooth. Hey, Renee's here. Thanks. <laughs> well, like, hey, I Renee. <laughs> Man, I, I haven't heard from Renee in I don't know how long. He's a big on TikTok. Yeah. Now. Uh, you you got to follow him over there. So, well, and uh, I used if to anybody have, you used to see him on Facebook, but he's not commented lately. So, I'm going to put in the comments what my TikTok name is. Uh, Dave, can you do that too? I can. Uh, yeah. Let me think. What is my TikTok name? I think I just have it <laughs> under. Soul fragments, I think, is all it's under. Yeah, yeah, I think that you're right. Let's Thank see. you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. It means a lot. I think you were probably one of the biggest pushers in getting me back on air. So I appreciate you and Andio. <laughs> ah, thank you, big game man. Um, so yeah, Matt, you got to get on TikTok, it's fun. Uh, have you had anything interesting or weird happen to you on TikTok so far, Dave? Or you've only been on it a day? Um, <laughs> you, you know, I, I can't say anything really weird. It, it, for me, it's learning to use another app and, and trying to figure out what it's all about. And, and so finally, I'm getting in the groove. Um, but all it's just like all of a sudden, so it's like you have two followers. Then you have three then suddenly you have six and, and that just keeps going. And like today, all of a sudden, finally, I had like nine people start following me on one shot. Um, so nice. I'm getting some followers. Yeah. Matter of fact, I had somebody ask me yesterday, said, do you sell your stones? And uh, I said, no, but I do have some rocks out in the shop we can talk about. And oh, wait a minute. No, that's not where I'm supposed to go. Um, you know, so uh, my and, and there's a reason why I call them soul fragments is because. Each one of them that I make is it, it, it just a, it comes from deep inside and I've always hoarded them. So I have a hard time selling them, but, but I do all of them are for me sale. Me too. Me too. That know? is, that is okay. Yeah. Everything's got a price, right? But everything's marked like a million dollars. You know, <laughs> I, I love I, all my rocks. I, I put a price tag <laughs> on each one of my kids and I keep having to drop those down. So not everything has the great value we think. Uh, no, it's, yeah. it's, uh, uh, yeah, no, we eventually, you know, we have to, if we're going to stay in this Cheerston, we have to learn to let some of that loose. Um, and the thing that convinced me is, wait a minute, uh, somebody likes what I have. And though I may not feel like it's worth, you know, um, let somebody else enjoy it. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Cause it's not like you can take it with you. No. Yeah. And, so. and I can only pet so many rocks a day. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's one of those things where I'm just like a guardian of them until they go on to their new home because they're going to live on long after I'm gone. 
I think that's why I love right. carving rocks so much. I'm I'm working on this cute little agate owl. Sarah gave me the rock, so I've just been carving oh, it out. Yeah, we're gonna have to talk about that one because you know my my <laughs> oldest daughter um, and her owl thing. loves owls. Oh yes. yeah, yes. <laughs> she still has the last owl stuff I bought from you. It's all displayed. But I think you know when you touch a rock like that. You're putting a part of you into it. And if it goes out into nature and gets left somewhere and the whole civilization falls, that rock's still going to be shaped like an owl, probably. Right. Unless it gets crushed or melted, you know, in a nuclear bat blast. Well, and and the, and the thing, you know, you know, here it's really popular. People paint rocks and they take them out and they leave them places. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the thing yeah. about that is, is eventually that, that paint wears off. But when you've carved something like you've done right there... You know, it, it doesn't just it doesn't just wear off. That's uh that's an eternal thing. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. So I, I'm just you know, that's what I'm doing, and I think you know, basically we're all just trying to get through winter, right? Now that right. fall's here, <laughs> got new windows in the house. Going to be warm this winter. I'm oh, so excited. Oh, let's not even talk about that. I still have so many <laughs> aluminum windows that need to be replaced, and uh, oh no, it, it, it's just oh. not. It's not cheap. No, I think it was six grand for the whole house to get all new windows. It's it's insane. And now we got to yeah. get a new roof. So, you know, yeah. maybe I should sell a rock or two. I had a company <laughs> come out that bid me nine thousand to do two windows, and I, I basically uh, told them he was out of his ever loving wow. skull. Yeah, they must have been made of gold. Um, they are that um, triple pane. Yeah, they're a triple pane. They're made by a company. I mean, they were really great windows, but they weren't nine thousand dollars worth of great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we passed on a few people that came in and gave us bids, and we're just like, that's insane. You know, right around the same price. And then we found someone that did it for five or six, so right. that's not too bad. Yeah, I like what Matt said. Mark, yes, uh, Matt. You know, Matt said we 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 leave a mark on all of the rocks that we touch, and 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 rocks do touch me. We'll do that, Josh. Jo yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you for joining in. Um, any last words you want to say to the family here? You know something, everybody, I, I miss all of you. And uh, I'm just glad that you came tonight to support uh, Cheerston. I know I know things are changed. Things are a little bit different. I just couldn't let her do the first show on her own without me. I, I just missed it so much. And, and you know, this this old soft heart, I was about in tears over the thing. And I thought, no, I, I'm going. And uh, so uh, I, I appreciate all of you being here and for the support. And uh, we haven't gone anywhere either. We're still there. And I'll be here from time to time to come in, even if I just jump in chat for a while. Uh, yeah. Cheerston and I have been friends for a long time. And you guys are all family. And I appreciate every one of you. Now, thank you for coming tonight and being so supportive. I know it looks weird. I think my caps lock is on. And I tried to, like, capitalize <laughs> the first. Anyways, <laughs> that's the name of their show, The Love of Laugh Terry. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, I just, I want to say thank you to everybody who's been here with me and through this and we're going to have a great show next week. So next week is Sean Rasmussen. He's a dear friend of mine, been friends for years. Uh, he owns SK Star Mines and he is going to come on, talk about owning his mine, talk about mining, talk about uh, his stone, which is the only, like the only place in the world you can get this stone is from his mine. Like he discovered an entirely new stone. So it's called a uh, black topaz. Um, and so it'll be a really fun show. He'll be with his wife um, and we'll, we'll get to learn all about that. And I'll be giving away some black topaz next week. So you better tune in for that. Congratulations again to Jaws for winning tonight. And this will be available on Spotify, Spotify watchers. Please leave a comment so that um, I know you're there and we'll try to get you a, a gift going too. Um, thank you, Matt. I appreciate you so very much. I appreciate everybody. Um, and I think that's it for tonight, folks. Keep on rocking. Taking you out, Matt, Dave. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for Cheerston for having me. Okay. Bye-bye.
You're super welcome. Oh my gosh, you guys. Um, thank you. Thank you for being here with me tonight. Meant a world to me. Uh, friendships run deep here. And we're going to keep things going. We're going to support our friends, our co-hosts that switched over to a new, entirely new show. We are going to support them with our whole hearts, guys. And with that, just have a great night. Have a great week. And we'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Okay. Great show, guys. Let's go. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. See you next Thursday at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time.